Hey, Steve. How's it going? All right. It seems like a while since I've seen you. I uh, holidays. There is those things. I, I even trimmed my beard just for this occasion. <laughs> you look just as clean and proper as always. Uh, just like a hat. And we've got Phil with the new title and roll. Hey, Mike. Hey, Phil. Sorry, Mike, you were starting to say something. Uh, I was I was pointing out where the hat is. It's right there on oh, the yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cowboy hat. We'll, we'll give another minute or two, but we do have a packed agenda, so we'll try to kick things off here quickly. For just for housekeeping, um, the I don't call it Kreb or not, but the Peter G Gallic from uh, that was talking about the um, uh, not conformant, but benchmark work. They needed to reschedule for next week, so I saw somebody was discussing, excited to see what they're going to present. But they did have, they did have to move to next week. <clears throat> So for those actually also keeping notes in the HackMD, notice that we actually have a week ahead of us already planned. So um, I think I moved out. We seem to have quite a few people here already. So, um, I guess, Neil, do you want to just kick it off with your first topic? Well, first of all, actually, wait, this is the first of 2021, right? So welcome, everybody, to 2021. Good to have that one behind us. And uh, it'll be a pretty packed year, I'm sure. So welcome back, everybody. And Neil, to you. All right. Uh, thanks. This is my first time attending a, uh, one of your OCI meetings. Uh, I, I'm, uh, my name is Neil Johnson. Background: I am a software engineer at IBM, and and after discussing this with Mike, he suggested I come here for introductions. Uh, so my background is is I work in ZOS development at IBM. Um, you don't know what ZOS is? It's it's our IBM's flagship uh, system, Z mainframe um, operating system. So. Uh, IBM issued a statement of direction that, that we want to bring, that IBM wants to bring um, containers, specifically open source technology containers uh, to the ZOS platform. And what I've been doing recently is working on this initiative, my team, and uh, my team leader is also here, Kershaw Mehta. So, I, so I'm here to introduce myself and and saying that I'm you know we're working on containers uh, I think where I where I started and it's going to be a, a journey for for us as a platform to bring containers but uh, I was thinking one thing I might want to start with is is looking at we've already been looking at this but looking at like the OCI runtime spec and and trying to introduce ZOS as a platform um, into that specification um, so I hope to soon, uh, you know, kind of get that ball rolling and uh, maybe open up a PR with uh, a basic thing for ZOS. Um, you know, another thing about ZOS, it it, it is POSIX com it is a POSIX compliant operating system, um, but there's a lot of other unique aspects to ZOS. Uh, but probably to start, it would probably look a lot like. The Solaris aspect of the runtime spec in that regards, except for their specific uh, Solaris uh, platform specific section. But, um, you know, I expect to kind of ours to look like that for ZOS maybe initially and, and hopefully, um, you know, evolve as needed as, as uh, we move forward. Cool. Thank you, Neil. Yeah, so we'll, we'll, we'll be helping shepherd you, right, through the, through the process as you go from the runtime spec, get that in first, and then run C, 
uh, updates and things like that, right? Uh, and then, then hopefully, you know, through the rest of the stack outside with Kubernetes as, as you bring it all on to, uh, to ZOS, I think it'll be interesting. Steve, he's going to basically be a, you know, the Windows WCAL for, uh, you know, for, for the ZOS mainframe guys. They, they also, there's a Z Linux. So it's, it's very much like how you're going to have your setup with, you know, LCAL and WCAL. Gotcha. So we're adding more pets to the family? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what, what, one more. What, what's it going to hurt, right? Uh, and of course, we're going to have to, you know, work on CI, CD, you know, issues across and, as well to get those all done. But yeah, it should be, it should be fun. And, yeah. Uh, I, well, I, yeah, obviously, I know the folks. I'm not the expert there. So if you need any connections with the folks over at Windows and John Starks and others that are working on it, I'm happy to connect you and um, try to learn from what they learned of things they wish they did differently and the things they've done well that they like. Exactly. Yep. Yep. That's, yeah, that's the kind of link I was hoping that we could get with Neil, uh, you know, with you guys, since you guys are both trying to push a new platform uh, through, you know, it, yeah, yeah, sure. Linux is going to work easy, but yeah, getting other, other platforms isn't going to be as easy, especially now in the test buckets. Understood. Well, I, I appreciate the welcome and, and I'm, I'm looking forward to it. So. so if that's that one, the next agenda item was Auras. What's the story with Auras? So I'll leave that for Josh and Nisha to cover. Hello, happy new year. Um, I was chatting with Nisha in Slack uh, recently. And uh, she was interested in using ORUS to um, work on some experiments and noticed that trying to pull from Docker Hub was not, um, was not initially supported or it would, it would essentially pull and you wouldn't get any uh, artifacts out. And uh, there was also a discussion I put a link to a proposal from, it looks like all the way February, almost a year old, um, where basically the ORUS project, trying to put it into open containers organization so that it's better supported. Um, and I'm looking through the comments and the number one issue with getting it in um, was from, basically Alexa, who is noting that it doesn't support images. Um, and so essentially, why be an open, open containers project if it's not supporting open container images? Well, it does enable things um, that are trying to use the same distribution API. Uh, it doesn't support like the, the main function of open containers. So, I wanted to start a discussion um, regarding like twofold. How, how could maybe ORUS be rethought or redesigned? Because there's definitely a lot of really good code there. Um, it's using the container D uh, resolvers and um, works pretty well. Uh, but it should definitely, if it's going to be open containers, work with images. Um, and then the other side of it, what, is there anything that, so is there anything that's stopping it from going to open containers now? Can we just put something like a roadmap file that says we're wishing to do this or, um, Will the TLB members want to see that implemented prior to getting it in? And the third thing, which I don't have written here, is um, there was another issue um, on Umochi regarding pooling OCI images. And does it make sense for Umochi to do that? Or should there be a tool for building and a tool for uh, push and pool? Um, Nisha, maybe if you want to uh, add anything, but that's pretty much the gist, I think. Yeah, um, 
I, I think you, yeah, I think you got it all right. Um, right now I am using Docker and Builder to push images to Docker Hub, um, like the whole images, but I use Auras to pull uh, like pieces of the images, like the configs and the manifest. Um, I, there isn't, well, what I've noticed is that the, the push operations do not necessarily correspond to the distribution spec REST API. Uh, and I'm wondering if that's by design. So that's the, the first question. The other, que uh, and, and to uh, Josh, Josh's point on separations of concerns between Emochi and Oras, my personal opinion is to um, have the push and the build operations or the manipulation operations separate but it would be nice if they were in sync with each other. So people can plug, uh, if they want to experiment, they can plug the two tools together and say, okay, this is for, this is for making OCI images um, in your local environment, Umochi is, and ORAS is for uploading or downloading those images. And um, also there isn't really a client tool that out there that supports uh, OCI artifact style uh, images. So the one with the index.json. And I'm wondering if ORAS could be that tool that can uh, push and pull index.json to be able to add, you know, other man, uh, list of manifests or append to the list of manifests. Uh, and yeah, that's all I have. And, and I guess the final one is it would, um, there's there's not much support on ORAS and I'm totally willing to, you know, add the, you know, uh, contribute to it. I just don't know, um, well, it, it, what the community is like for that project. I guess it would get more visibility if it was moved under open containers, but I don't know what the what y'all think about that. I mean, I mean thanks, Nisha. I, I could talk about some of the stuff that happened when we tried to submit it, and, um, and you know, Phil was a big part of that as well, and I, I think Mike, you were too. Um, we, there was a good conversation around whether ORAS should focus on images or not, and, and OCI having OC, you know, C being in it, is that you know the main pivot. Um, so let's start with the OCI part of it. Is while OCI has obviously started with around containers, we've kind of elevated it past and supporting you know artifacts of which image is the predominant artifact type. Um, so it, it has kind of expands a little bit and by calling it OCI, then we don't really have to spell the names. I can't remember what right good examples of other acronym companies are, whether it be IBM or Xerox or something, I don't know. Anyway, uh, so we, we definitely kind of think of it as a broader charter. That's why we have the OCI artifacts in there that supports things that are not images. Um, we, we, we didn't really start ORAS. I mean, honestly, it was Josh and Chiwe that did most of it. Um, I have some ideas that we were tossing around um, that that became the tool to enable additional things pushed to a registry. I mean, even or as is, uh, what was it? OCI registry as storage, I think is what you originally did or as Josh what was the name. That's, that's the acronym. Yes. Yeah. So um, it wasn't really meant to target images. So that's why the image stuff isn't in there. We were trying to figure out how to address the index, but it wasn't necessary to be a collection of multi-arc images. The thought process up until just recently was, let's use manifest and index as is and put other artifact types in there. There is a new set of OCI, artif OCI artifact manifest that I've been working on that I'm we'll actually talking a couple of minutes about, hopefully we get to it. 
um, that is trying to address the things where we were trying to squeeze things into manifested index. And I'm hoping that'll actually do two things. One, let the image spec, which is where image index, image manifest and image index are defined, stay and they can evolve as they want. And there's some work around, you know, this V2 stuff that they're thinking about. And then there can be another manifest that'll actually deal with the larger set of uh, scenarios, um, including references back and forth, dependencies and references and so forth that we need for notary and other artifact types. So I, I think there's a good healthy question to have like, should ORAS target images? Cause there are lots of other tools out there like Emochi that target specifically target images. And can or as can and should or as target the other things that you put in a registry that attach things to images, right? We, we use or as as part of the notary work because we're adding a signature to an image. We would in theory use it. We use it for Helm where you're adding charts that define an image, but it doesn't it doesn't need to manipulate images. It just needs to reference them. I don't I don't think any one of them should be particularly first class citizens. The only thing that it could or should you know, handle in that situation is like when we get into how to address additional things like layers or chunks or whatever it is, the same kind of garbage collection story. Like if you embed anything that points to other objects, you know, like that, that conundrum, like nothing should be particularly a first class citizen, like images are to registries. I feel like. Yeah. Um, from my perspective, since I work on, uh, S bombs, um, it, it, kind of actually makes sense to, um, you know, have a collection of blobs that uh, represent either a number of SBOMs or one SBOM for, you know, one package. Um, and the OCI layout looks really ideal for this, making those kind of references saying that Okay, this the this S bomb references that blob which is included in this image uh, which you pull down using this um, image name and this tag, um, and it's one of those things that are not. I mean, people don't really need it unless they need it. So it, it's almost like when I when I think of artifacts, I think of them as supplemental artifacts, not. Um, not really, mm, not uh, really needed for spinning up container images, but uh, definitely needed for things like signatures and verifying signatures, verifying S bombs, um, chain of trust, uh, all of the you know the other stuff that goes along with it. Um, well, I mean, in that respect, yeah, ORAS is uh, really useful there. Um, but it would be nice to have like the one tool to rule them all, I suppose. <laughs> I mean, and I and I I suppose I'm throwing them. Uh, I'm thinking about this more like uh, you know an architectural decision than a user interface decision because they're all, they're all artifacts. Uh, the blobs are, the, the image layers are artifacts. The, the only difference is that the configs, the, the configs are different. So a client tool can figure out what to do with these artifacts. Um, so if you imagine like, for example, the SBOM scenario, there may be a client tool that stitches all the SBOMs together to make a coherent document. Um, for that, there needs to be a config, but that's not necessarily, uh, I mean, that isn't the domain of the distribution spec or the image spec, I would think. Uh, that's That config part is really for the client. I don't know if that makes sense. No, it makes sense. I, I think, the um, I'm wondering if this is just a good conversation to have like, with a bunch of people that are um, on the ORAS group, and um, because I think there's, you know, there's been a bunch of these conversations that have circled around this space. Uh, the piece that I felt as we walked away from the last round of conversations was not really the image part of it, because that was a conversation, and I thought we landed that one. It was more 
hey, this thing references a bunch of libraries that are kind of duplicated. Can we do some cleanup? And there is an open issue on it that we're going to do the cleanup. And of course, with a lot of these OSS projects, not everybody wants to do the non-fun stuff. Um, I can say from our perspective and what we're doing from a, a Microsoft and how we're allocating resources to it, as we're doing the next round of work for Notary um, and we're pursuing this artifact uh, manifest, that we'll need to go back and update ORAS. And I was hoping that at that point that while we're working in it to do these additions that we could do the cleanup that's in those open issues that should hopefully address the, the really kind of the blocking questions on whether we would have it adopted under OCI. And it's just, it, it, I haven't seen anybody blocked by it um, on the, the issues that we've got currently. And in fact, recently we had the security thing that we, everybody jumped on. Um, it was happening behind the scenes because as most of these things do. So we have the right activity on it, but we were just trying to figure out what the right process was. But as we discussed what projects go in OCI versus CNCF, or as is not meant to be like, hey, the world knows about it, everybody's using it, it's like thousands of maintainers. It's a core infrastructure piece that there'll be a couple of people working on it, take contributions from whoever, and it enables a whole breadth of tools. And those other tools might be in CNCF, but the idea is it's meant to be kind of this stable platform piece that other people can use. Um, but that said, like, uh, um, I forget how to pronounce his name. Josh, help me. Who is the guy that's been working, uh, adding, making all the additions recently uh, from Israel? Oh, you're talking about Avi? Avi, thank you. Um, so Avi's had a bunch of really good additions that he's made PRs and we've been shepherding those through. So uh, it's definitely active. We're definitely interested in the, in the feedback. We definitely want to support things like S-bombs. Um, so, like we so can set up another call specific on that, so not because you know, like I said, there's a bunch of other things on the call. Okay, I think, that sounds. I think. Go um, ahead, John. Sure. Yeah. So I think that open containers should have a uh, a basically official tool, whether it's this or it's baked into Emoji or something brand new. So I think just um, I don't know. I don't. I think for ORAS to be part of the like Microsoft open source thing might be uh, not, it, it, I think it will be healthier if it's elsewhere. And if it's not going to support images, it maybe it belongs somewhere in a cloud native world. But I think for it to be more supported, I'm not, I don't know that just because it becomes under one of those orgs, it becomes I'm not automatically more supported, but it seems like it's kind of eyes are pointed at Microsoft. What's what should we do about some of these things? Um, and we really don't. We want to shepherd it and support it. Yeah, we're not trying to own this. Like this is not a Microsoft software project that we take contributions. It's an open source project that we want to support and and have multiple maintainers from other companies you know help us. We just we're here to support it. Sounds good. Um, as far as uh, like. The, the functions for pushing and pulling are concerned, it almost feels like it's a, a tool for primitives, just like the Docker primitives, like, uh, you know, Docker from scratch, uh, Docker add, Docker commit, those kind of things, or build up add. Uh, so build up has like uh, container build primitive, primitives. I think like ORAS could have like, um, Containerish push pull primitives, uh, and it supports uh, it supports that, just not all the way. So I I can't use ORAS to push index.json to uh, OCI compatible uh, registries right now. And that would be nice to have. Yeah, we purposely not purposely we we did not add index support yet, and. Um, I think we'll, I'm hoping the other, if we get to it, this other conversation around the artifact manifest will help address that. Maybe we don't need to add an index support if we're not adding multi-arc image tooling around ORAS. If we do, then we should do that. But if ORAS is supporting all the things that are around images, all the other artifact types, then I'm hoping this other thing actually cracks open all the answers to the problems that we've been having. I, I did add, I just enabled discussions on ORAS so that you know we can 
have a more diverse range of discussions on it. And... So, you know, I think, I think some of the uneasiness around, you know, where this fits in OCI is, I mean, I know some of it was discussions about things that have just been talked about, but I think if you step back a little bit, um, I think, you know, there were quite a few discussions last year about scope of OCI, what, you know, why we even have software in it, you know, the fact that Run C is a, a, quite a unique case. Um, so I, I think what we have to be careful here is like, you know, I feel like I've seen in the last six months, like everybody's writing registry tools. There's a bunch of new ones on GitHub, which is good. I mean, that's, that's great. People are trying out different things. People are playing with multi-arc. They're playing with indexes. Um, but, you know, I, I think trying to figure out where, are there a few very core library pieces that can help people quote unquote, do the right thing, like assemble an image config properly, uh, talk to a registry properly over a, a resolver like the container D resolver. Um, you know, those are maybe viable OCI projects, but you know, the actual tooling really should, should be something that's, it doesn't even have to be an official CNCF project, but you know, that there should be communities around interesting tools that people create and you know, that that's how, you know, Docker grew to be where it is with things like build kit and uh, Linux kit and, you know, Red Hat created Podman and Builda and all, you know, there, there's a whole community of, of tools that can do different interesting things. So I, I guess that's where I know some of the, the TOB, you know, we're struggling with, uh, you know, what do we want to have here um, in the OCI and, and, you know, once it's a full fledged tool now, you know, we have to, like the discussion we're having, should it support indexes, should it support pushing and pulling images or this kind of artifact. And I, I think, I think that's where it, it gets tricky to understand why, you know, is there a scope and an understanding of why that needs to be OCI versus just a basic library that that lets other people build all kinds of registry client tooling um, in a consistent way. So that, that's my two cents. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of in that boat as well in terms of like trying to figure out whether or not this is something, at least a direction that the, that OCI should go in terms of like taking in some of these like projects. Like, yeah, I agree. Like run C was kind of grandfathered in, but in retrospect, it's, it's not always clear whether it belongs. Like, just if you look at like the content of these meetings, uh, when you have a single project coming in, you don't always have maintainers for that project. Um, whereas, I think there's a lot of specification stuff that OCI should focus on and still has work to do there. Um, that being said, like I don't have any uh, anything against the Oris project, or I think it's I think it's a good project, but. You know, I see stuff like uh, this new distribution organization coming along, and I wonder if places like that could have room for these sort of like sub projects in the future that seem to have better, or us is better scope for that, I feel like, than an OCI. Yeah, I no, actually, I actually on uh, the distribution thing that happened this morning. So their um, distribution did get donated to CNCF. Uh, uh, Justin Cormack's been working on that. Um, there was a meeting this morning where they finally were able to press the button. It turns out distribution was owned by some bot type account. So they were able to, the GitHub folks were able to clear that up and it did get moved. Uh, Justin is moving, working on a, an announcement for that he'll get out next week, I guess. And maybe that is a good question. Like Aura is under Deus Labs was always a staging ground until we got something else done um, to find the right home. So if it's not OCI, maybe distribution is the right one. Distribution is a reference implementation and maybe Aura is a reference implementation. That's a great, that's a great conversation. And in fact, just for the sake of time, I, I don't know, I, I feel bad because there was a bunch of other things on the agenda. Um, and I know Josh is trying to get to the distribution spec. So should we move this to a discussion on ORAS, the discussions feature? 
and we can pick up next week and based on where those things evolve. Does that work? I, I would say keep it in the issues. I don't know if people look at the discussions yet, but. Um, so was, yeah. was part of the discussion that it could just be merged into the distribution project that now lives on CNCF or what? I think it's one option. I think but there's there's some cleanup that we would want to do to ORAS regardless. There's an issue that specifically talks about the cleanup and refactoring that we want to do in ORAS. That should happen regardless of where it goes. Whether it goes to OCI, CNCF, under distribution, which is also CNCF, I think the question we had last time around the stuff, why something goes in OCI versus CNCF, CNCF was pretty healthy. And Phil, I, I can't find those notes. Um, if that, you know, it wasn't meant to be a, like a highly active, uh, bigger project. And again, I'm going into the discussion again. Um, but yeah, that was, I think we need to do some cleanup and then we should decide where's the right place for it to go. I don't think we want 800 ways to have registry tools to do various different things. It'd be nice if we, part of this, what I'm trying to do with the artifacts uh, manifest is help enhance the distribution spec to have the set of capabilities that we think we really want, including eventual search and some of the other things and how do we handle deletes. If we can add those to a spec, then I think it makes it really easy for people to write registry tools that actually work across all registries. Imagine that instead of every cloud having its own registry tool. Um, so I think the conformance work that Josh did is like the first, the first step of that. Who's even conformant with the distribution spec? And then how do we enhance it with new capabilities? So I posted in the Zoom chat, uh, which I guess I should have put in HackMD, but um, pull request 76 in the TOB both has a link to a HackMD set of notes from our TOB calls last spring. And then of course the pull request itself has chatter on, you know, some of that discussion around what, what do we think, how, how do we figure out how to make those decisions about OCI versus elsewhere, which um, I guess reminds me that it's been since last May that I haven't <laughs> I done to... the next rev of that. <laughs> I was about to say, this is a lot of, is... Hmm. Okay. So, yeah, I guess maybe that goes on the to-do list for 2021. All right, I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and end that discussion. Um, and I just, just for one minute, just wanna talk about distribution spec um, one zero. So uh, I think we had the RC1 that came out in October or something like that. And then we were trying to aim for a November release of 1.0 a lot of discussions came in since then, um, but essentially we we dropped the ball on that. So uh, we're I want to propose that we cut the release by the end of by the end of February um, and just kind of do away with it. So uh, there's two issues in the milestone, and unless there's any objections, um, myself or Peter will try to address those in a PR. And if I could have help from the maintainers to get those in in a reasonable time and we can hopefully release um, by the end of February. Uh, there was a bunch of discussion about content negotiation that had a lot of activity. And the result of that, uh, if you missed it, is we put a markdown file in the root of the repo called content negotiation that just basically says, this is in progress, look at this issue. So I think things like that, and in the Zoom chat, we're talking about off stuff. I think we can push that to a 3.1, 3.2 timeline, get something out there. It's been um, like three or four years. So um, that's all I have. If there's any, I'm sure there's not many objections, but if there's any objections to doing less to be done. Please uh, speak now or in the issues very soon.
that's all. Cool. Josh, can you paste some uh, links to the things you want people to review? Uh, I'll sure. I'll I'll just post the milestones link. And Perfect. yeah. Okay, I lost track. What's next? Um, that's the notes. Oh, okay, that's me. Um, so again, th this is a, a beginning of discussion. I don't want to take up the whole meeting because there are others. Uh, where is the share? There we go, share screen. Um, Okay, so buried in the details of what Nisha's kind of poking on is we've been trying to figure out how do we handle um, artifacts that have other references. CNAB has been the historic one, um, whereas you have a top level thing that points at others. It turns out that notary actually is the opposite. I want to be able to set, put something in the registry that refers to something that is already there. And we don't want to change the um, digest or the tag of the thing we're adding signatures to, right? It's a, it was a fundamental design point. So we've been iterating on this for a while and I finally had some time to spend on this and I wanted to try to capture all the loose ends that we've been saying, we really want to be able to store these additional things in a registry, but how do we do it and how do we decouple the work that's around image spec, sorry, image index and image manifest in the image spec and maybe decouple this a little bit more. And the idea was we definitely don't wanna have a manifest for every artifact type because as registry operators and registry tooling, you have re generic registry tooling, that would be a huge burden. Uh, I, I, if you, I keep on thinking of the registry as being a cloud file system API in a, in a very overly simplistic model and there's no office APIs for saving and loading files to the disk, right? There's no Excel, there's no um, uh, Go library for, well, it goes out of, of course it's Go libraries. You, you get what I mean. There's no application specific APIs for how you save files. There's general file system APIs that support copying, deleting, moving, renaming, and so forth. So if we're gonna put things into a registry and have these generic APIs, we need a way to say, well, what is the, thing, what is a way to describe this thing with some more flexibility than we've had with manifest and index to date. So I wanted to try to capture the design points. And, and by the way, these are all on the artifact, uh, on the artifacts as a PR. It's a PR draft. It's by no means done. Uh, but it's, I wanted to get something that people could start putting notes, PR notes and discussions and so forth. So from a design point, there's a couple of them, one of which is Artifacts are going to move within and across registries. So how do you define something so that the graph can move in the level of granularity that somebody wants? How do you define that graph in such a way that tools don't need to know about specific artifact types? So I just have some examples here where you've got in dev a couple of images. Some of them get promoted to staging. Some of them get promoted to prod. Or you might have different registries that you want to promote within. Right, kind of the basic stuff that we all deal with all the time. Uh, and then the idea is you might publish them for public consumption. One of the things is there's a, a couple of, if you look at things like PyPy and other package managers, um, there's an interesting deferred resolution. Um, some things are uh, defined that you absolutely have to define, right? Uh, an image has no value unless you have the layers. There's no reason to have layers not you know, uploaded with the image. And the Windows foreign layer thing is, I think we all agree, wasn't, wasn't a wonderful thing, <laughs> uh, it was a legal thing, it wasn't something, and we're actually trying to detangle that for a, a host of reasons. So that is- Nobody that is was a, proud uh, of it, no. Huh? Nobody was proud of it. Yeah, it was, it was one of those that we had to do something, this is the best we could do, this is not an answer to, to map to mirror image. So Neil, take note, please don't follow that pattern. We're trying to undo it. Um, so back to the point is, you know, an image only makes sense if the layers are right there with it. But a signature is something I would add on later. I may or may not have signatures. At the same token, a signature has no value on it un, of, unto itself, 
right? A signature, if I delete the image and the thing that, and the signature, the signature should be deleted with it. And if what's interesting here is look at the, if we look at the directionality and registries today know how to look down at references. So the WordPress image has pointers in the manifest that point to the layers. A notary signature has pointers that points to its config and the blob that represents the signature. But there's no way for the notary signature to actually say how it references the WordPress image. So what we're proposing in this manifest is a way to do just that. The WordPress image can look down as layers. The manifest has that. The manifest gets uploaded. It has a digest, has a tag, and lives all itself. Later on, I can add any number of signatures that defines its blobs, the signature itself, but can also say, hey, by the way, I am signing this other artifact happens to be an image. So how do you describe that in a manifest so that a registry can parse that, know how to represent it, know how to return it in a, in a listing API, I don't want to use the search term yet, in a list API, and also the registry would know how to delete the things that are dependent on the image because they don't believe, they don't have a, a, a standing on, unto themselves. The other direction is just as valid though. If we look at a possibility for how you can do uh, Helm charts, because Helm charts are in a registry today, but they're fairly constrained in around what they do um, in the sense of how they're represented in a registry. A registry might be able to support a Helm chart, but the registry, unless it's doing special, special parsing of the Helm chart, it has no way of knowing what it references. What we want is a way for a registry can know about what it references. So this way, as I'm copying it from one place to another, I can make sure I have the option of copying those images. I might say I don't want to copy those images. That's also a, a fair thing. Uh, but I have the ability to be able to retarget it. So if I copy the WordPress chart from Helm Hub and it's referencing images in Docker Hub, if I copy that to my private registry where I want everything in my environment and no dependency externally, I want to be able to say very easily, hey, by the way, when I copy this in, if I put the WordPress and MySQL image in my registry and the WordPress chart is there, I can very easily describe that graph in, a, in an easy way. There, there's some configuration mappings that I might provide to it, but those would also be generic to a registry. So notice the directionality and notice in this case where these were solid lines because there's a, a direct coupling. This is this dotted line where it says, hey, it's, it's a loose reference. And if I go in one step further, a CNAB is actually another super collection. This is the one that we tripped up that we never got to index. And I think this might be a better answer where a WordPress has a direct dependency on its, what's referred to today as the invocation image. But the invocation image should really only be the CLI that it needs to run whatever it's doing. The WordPress chart would be really nice if that wasn't embedded in this invocation image, if it was external. And then we're just repeating what we saw above where the WordPress chart references a WordPress image. And of course, WordPress charts could reference, sorry, charts could reference other charts. So there's a, I know the team has been working on a bunch of dependency stuff. So the kind of the scenarios that I've been trying to think about that we could represent with this manifest are discovery in a, re discovery in a registry through a listing API or you know, through pixels that would use the listing API. How do you copy within and across? How do we manage deletion without having to guess? Um, and without having to know specifically about each artifact type and uh, enhancing content. So this is the what notary and SBOMs do. You add a notary and SBOM to an existing artifact. And of course we wanna do validation, but I wanna make sure that the manifest has enough information that you can validate. And then the client, whoever's doing the validation can decide how much deep validation that they want. Maybe I don't need to validate that these images were actually uploaded when the Helm chart. Maybe I do. That's like a, by having the schema defined, the client can just pass parameters and decide what to do with that information. I'm gonna skip through this. I'm gonna go through this UI piece, then I'll pause to, for conversation. Um, if we look at the way, you know, a listing could work today, I have the image, this is the tag. I have the layers here. And then I have other artifacts. Now, of course, in registries, we don't list the layers at the same level as an image, right? The layers are part of an image. So we don't even show the layers. You can drill in if you want, but wouldn't show those as peers. 
the same thing should be for a signature. A signature wouldn't have a tag and even have a, it's going to have a digest. I don't really want to see it listed here or the SBOM. Now, a CNAB and a Helm chart, I might want to see as a parallel listing. The idea is what I really probably want to do is have the image with some the enhancements or the data that's associated with it shown as adornments of types. So here I'm showing an image that's got a signature, it has an SBOM, and it has some metadata. If I were to expand this, you know, very obvious uh, uh, expando thing that's just totally Frankenstein in here, you could see that the CNAB, which has got a signature, an SBOM, and some attributes, could be expanded to show, oh, this is the Helm chart it references. By the way, sorry, this is the invocation image that it references. By the way, it also references a Helm chart, and the Helm chart references these two images. So you can start to see that if, if this manifest works out as we hope, that we'd be able to have these capabilities. And if we really squint at this, the only reason that the I'm able to paint these icons on here is there is a mapping that you can say this media type goes to this icon. Because if you take the icons away, this graph can be very easily represented. And the icons, there's another PR that uh, explains how to do that. So before I get into the container image copying, I figured I'd pause for conversation. If I could find the mute button. I was going to uh, wait until you finish, and then I'd ask about SBOM scenarios. Um, is that OK? Yeah, I can. Uh, it might make more sense when I show the proposed schema that does this. Um, but the idea is an SBOM is just like notary. You would, I might have the artifact in the registry already, uh, but I want to add an SBOM to it. The idea is you would want to be able to define that in a way that, again, the digest of the image shouldn't have to change, uh, or whatever the SBOM is being put associated with, or the and the tag shouldn't. How do I add something to it? And if I Maybe I'll just I'll skip down to it. I'll, I'm gonna, I'll skip down to it, bring it in people's eyes, and then people can tell me to stop or what you want to do. Um, here's the example, for instance, of how that schema would represent a, um, an image, or sorry, a, a signature to an image. So here is the, the, there's a couple of things I've lifted. If we're going to define a new schema, I was hoping I could clean up a couple of things. So first of all, this is the new media type, sorry, the new manifest type an OCI artifact manifest. So now we would basically have three manifests that a registry would support, people that wanted a registry that want to support this. There's, instead of us playing this game where we have to dig into the config media type because we wanted to stuff it into existing schemas, I did lift this up and now have an official artifact type. So we don't have to do what we've been doing. So this would be kind of a, a way to do a cleanup. Another cleanup, I, there was lots of debate around layers and layers or blobs. And I noticed Josh's latest PR talks about blobs. So layers is anonymous to blobs. I just, I've kept them named as blobs. So this is the actual content that makes up the signature or the Helm chart or whatever. So this, except for this element right here, this is exactly the same thing as an image spec, except I've renamed blobs. The new piece is there's a new collection called dependencies. And the dependencies, what this thing is saying, we're trying to figure out dependencies, depends on who, you know, well, who's my daddy, whatever. You know, parent, there's, there's a debate of name for this thing. But what it's saying is this thing, which is a notary signature, is dependent on this digest. And I did have the, the name, the tag in here, and we realized that's just duplicative information. The idea is this manifest would be put on the specific repo, because we couldn't figure out why dependence artifact types wouldn't need to reference things outside of its repo. So we're saying that the notary signature would be same, put in the same repo as the image it's signing. So we really only need the digest. So this thing is saying, I am attaching myself to this digest. And now we have the ability to represent a signature or an SBOM, Pianisha. The other one, I'll just bring it up real quick for the Helm chart, is in the Helm chart scenario, you have same thing, blobs that make up the Helm chart. Again, I'm, I'm being creative in this, Josh, just to kind of show what's possible, not what's actually Helm's doing. But now what it's saying in, in this stuff, as I'm referring to, in here, now we're saying references, which are loose references, 
are referencing the WordPress image and its digest, the MySQL image and its digest. And by having the digest and the, the repo and tag, the client can decide if it wants the latest version of MySQL 8 for ones that are patched, or it wants to pin to a very specific one. Because we store both values, you have the ability to, at the client, decide which way you want to do. So with that, I'll, I'll, I'll shut up. So Steve, when, when you say dependency, I guess there's a lot of context behind that, right? Do you, do you mean, um, you know, this image won't be loadable without this dependency being met? Or that it will attempt to load this, this referenced item? So this is the magic in what's in a name. So the definition, let me start with the definition and we're happy to change the name to something that makes yeah, it more. It's just meta, that, that's, that's cool. Yeah, so it, what it's saying is the image, this, this artifact, this notary signature has no value unless this it, 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 independent of this. So okay. it's dependent on this image. The image isn't dependent on the signature. Because we're introducing the idea of a registry being able to do a kind of reverse lookup, have an index that says, when I submit this image, sorry, when I submit this signature, the registry is going to keep track of the things that it referenced. And we've got a PR and distribution in the art in the notary repo that, that, that talks about this, but we're, but we're expanding on it. So that now a registry would be able to not only know what it's looking down on, right, the manifest that points to its layers, but we also want to say when a manifest comes in and says, I'm looking at something else, that that could get indexed as well. Because the beauty here is you don't really want to ask for a signature. What you really want to ask is, hey, I want the Helm chart. Sorry, um, the WordPress image. Let me stick with WordPress. I want the WordPress image, and I want all of the things associated with it, which of course include notary signatures. So that's the definition. I don't know if we've got the right word for this collection. Can I, um, so this particular um, manifest example, is that for the use case where you download um, like a specific container image? And then you want to ask it, does this image have a signature? Does it have a Helm chart associated with it? Uh, or which Helm chart, which Helm chart uses it? Or what, um, uh, does it have an S-bomb? And uh, then your client will say, oh, depending upon, hmm, where's it referenced? So. Yeah, no, so yes, that is the, the goal. And the goal is how do we add enhancements without breaking any of the image tools? Like we don't want the image tools to be broken because we're adding these enhancements. The idea is that um, eventually, as we prove notary works and as SBOMs prove that they work in, in whatever form, that the Docker client, the uh, uh, container D client could be updated because the, let's say the container D client cares very much around notary and SBOMs. So now the container D client will be able to call a generic registry API that says, give me all the things that are referen that reference the word uh, MySQL image. And it'll get back a collection. We have a, proto we have a prototype that shows you can filter that collection on the media type. So give me all the uh, references to the word, <laughs> sorry, I keep on saying WordPress. Give me all of the references to the MySQL image that are of type CNCF notary v2. So now I can say, all right, before uh, container D even runs the image, it can look and find the signatures that are associated with it. And if it's got a key that matches it with a policy that says run if I if it has a signature that matches my key, now it can deploy it. That's a scenario that kind of makes really sense that a container D or a Docker client or things that are container-ish would might want to embed into their experience. Okay. If SBOM uh, is in the same bucket, then they could absolutely do the same thing. Or you could have a separate SBOM tool that says, hey, give me all the SBOMs for the MySQL image. So yeah. it's really the idea is it's flexible. Okay. 
looks like uh, we're running out of time. So uh, I'll just look at the PR and uh, make comments there, so if that's OK. Uh, Steve, this is Ravi Chamati from Cisco. Um, the, the dependencies is probably a too tight of a term. Is, is, is this actually references? Um, no, we we did separate references from dependencies. What we're trying to do is represent. Uh, what's the where's the best example here? So a MySQL image has signatures that were added to it, mm -hmm. and these signatures are dependent on this image. Again, I don't like the word. I, I'm not sold the word. Sounds... The idea is that this thing, as a solid line, can't exist unless it here. The Helm chart has a reference to the MySQL image, mm -hmm. but it doesn't actually have to be in the same registry. Is this, is this uh, are we trying to capture uh, the life cycle of these artifacts um, uh, in, in conjunction or, or in the context of an image? Is that the goal? Uh, life cycle is a bit loaded. If your life cycle in the sense that when something's deleted, we want all the appropriate things to get deleted with it. That is what I would say yes. What else so, Ram, uh, if you're talking about like uh, supply chain security, then the idea is that all the artifacts that come with determining supply chain integrity will be, uh, let's say, it requires MySQL A to be present in order to be valid. So it's like a it's like a requires versus provides. So, uh, Steve, if you can correct me if I'm wrong here. But it sounds like the Helm uh, uh, chart will provide all of these artifacts: uh, the WordPress, the MySQL eight versus. Well, I like the requires in the sense that the signature requires the image for it to be complete, so that makes a lot of sense. From from a, from a use point of view, the Helm chart is also incomplete if uh, any of these images that it references actually gets deleted. So from up yes and no. So this is this was the interesting thing I was learning from PyPy and when we looked at it because uh, in, in full transparency, like one of the things. Well, right, I, I won't open that rat hole. Um, the like PyPy references don't actually have to live in the same PyPy registry. They just say I, I depend on this thing, but it's totally valid to not have them right now. And if you look at it, like a lot of the Helm charts are in one place and the images are in a different place. The idea is how do we represent that? From a registry validation perspective, we wanted to be able to define a way that on, on put of a manifest, the WordPress chart wouldn't be valid if it didn't have the blobs there that represent the chart itself. The idea that the chart references images that may or may not be in the registry and that's totally okay. On the client, when the, word, when the Helm CLI is trying to validate things before it deploys. Because actually, if you think about it, when a Helm chart is valid on a client, you don't have the images on the client. You run a Helm chart on the client and you're telling another service to run these images. Mm -hmm. So the idea is that you now I might want to say, hey, before I do a Helm deploy, let me see the images that are being referenced because the, it would be described in this manifest. Yep. Got them. I can go find all those. Now, if I tell them it's deployment, I have a chance of successful deployment. Credentials might not be right. There's other things why the deployment would fail. So, from a security point of view, uh, if I host the signature, let's say on um, on a PGP key of uh, like Ubuntu or something like that, it should still be valid, right? I can just uh, get the signature from anywhere. It doesn't have to be from the same registry where I got the image from. And this is as good as the reference um, I can at runtime, exactly when I'm instantiating the container, I can do these verifications when I have all the pieces together, wherever they come from. So you're getting some great conversations that's part of the notary things. Like we actually are saying that the signature would be in the registry alongside the artifact. It's not to say that you couldn't have it elsewhere, mm -hmm. but we are trying to make sure we can support that scenario. So uh, it's okay. a good debate to have in, in the notary and okay. where they're coupling. But from a from this conversation, we do, let's just say we want to make sure that the registry can support it. So if I do push the signature to the registry, does the signature have valid, is the signature valid if it can't find the thing it's signing? Maybe that's the other way to look at it. Got it. Thank you. We are at time. 
and I, I was afraid that this was going to go long and there was something else on the list, but we, we, we'd go in order of people adding things to the agenda. Um, so like this is our, this is the, we've been thinking about this for a while. I finally had the time to write this down. Um, there's obviously lots of things, including the name um, of collections. So please give us the feedback on it and tell us what we're thinking, you know, how we should revolve it. And for the, the SEPCOMP notify OCI stuff, it, I just, just move that to next week, um, get it in there quick. Uh, the Craig folks are going to uh, talk about some cool stuff next week as well. And same thing uh, for John for the listing, listing stuff. So with that, thank you for the first weekend, first meeting of the new year.